Hey folks, in this video we're going to be learning how to send a message to Slack using Google Apps Script. This is a level one beginner course, so we are just going to learn about uh, how to send JSON payloads and how to use Slack's block kit builder in order to uh, just send a message. So this is going to be static, it's not going to have um, any data coming from another source, uh, in a future video, I'm going to talk about how to use a Google Sheet in order to pass data from your sheet to Slack so that you can have a daily message uh, to inform your team. So uh, basically, we're going to be learning about Slack blocks. Uh, so you can see here, this is the markup code that we're going to need to send. Uh, we're going to be using a really cool tool that Slack gives you called Block Kit Builder. Uh, so we're going to be spending a little bit of time in here. Uh, so that we can get the basics of how this works and to see how easy it is to uh, get some ready-made code directly from Slack. Uh, and we're also going to focus on how to send a JSON payload. So we're going to be building the send payload function. We're then going to be going to block kit builder where we're going to make a basic uh, Slack message. And then we are going to send that message to a Slack channel. So what you're going to need for this lesson is a Slack workspace where you have um, admin privileges so that you can access the API and generate tokens and all that stuff, and a Google App Script, whether it's an unbounded script or a Google Sheet. I'm going to be using an unbounded script today. Uh, so if you want to follow along, I'm going to go up into the upper left-hand corner, select New, go to More, and then open up Google App Script. So I don't need this old um, IDE, and I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to close them out, and I'm going to create a new script. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is create um, two files. Uh, so we're going to go to this plus icon here. We're going to add a file. It's going to be a script file, and I'm going to call it function1, and it is going to be our send payload function. That is not case sensitive. You can call this whatever you want to. I'm also going to change my project to Slack message. I am going to clear out the boilerplate. You can leave it if you want to. I'm going to begin by typing out function, and I am going to call it send payload. And then it's going to have one argument, which we are going to call payload, which is going to be uh, our Slack blocks. Uh, so we will begin by defining your webhook. So we're going to declare a variable of webhook, and we're going to set it to an empty string. We're going to come back to this portion once we uh, generate our tokens within the Slack API, and then we are going to use a URL uh, that is called a webhook that we are going to attempt to send a post request. So in order to uh, set a post request, we are going to um, declare an options variable. Uh, so we will define your options, and we are going to create the variable called options, and we are going to use a curly bracket. And this portion of the code is case sensitive, so if you do have any errors arise, this is probably a pretty good place uh, to look. Uh, so we are going to use double quotes, and we're going to type out the word method. We're going to go to the right of the double quotes, use a colon, and then we're going to use another set of double quotes, and this is where we're going to declare our post request, right? Because we want to send data to Slack, so instead of get, we will do post. We're going to use a comma and hit enter. We're going to use another set of double quotes, and we're going to type out the word content, and then we're going to use a capital T for type. Again, this is case sensitive, so make sure you have content type with a capital T. Go to the right of your double quotes and create a colon. Uh, use another set of double quote, quotes and declare applications slash JSON, right? Because we are sending a JSON payload. So we're going to go to the right of that double quote, use a comma, hit enter, and then we're going to use mute capital H, T, T, P, capital E, exceptions. So mute HTTP exceptions with a capital H and a capital E. Go to the right of your double quotes, another colon, 
and then we're going to use a boolean value of true. So in the event that we get any HTTP exceptions, Google Apps Script will suppress them. So any HTTP errors will be uh, suppressed, and our script will continue to run even if there is an HTTP exception. We're going to use a comma, hit enter, and this is going to be our last uh, setting. So we're at parameter, we're going to do payload, go to the right of the double quotes, use a colon, and then we're going to use all capital letters JSON. You can see it comes up as a suggestion dot stringify. We're going to use parentheses, and this is where we're going to pass the only argument of our function. So we're going to type in the word payload, and that payload will be the Slack building blocks that we're going to get from BlockKit. Cool. So now we're going to uh, use a try catch so that in the event of an error, we will get some logging so that we can debug it. So we're going to try catch to send the payload. So we're going to do try with a curly bracket. I'm going to hit enter and we're going to use URL fetch app dot fetch. And then we're going to pass our webhook variable and our options variable separated by a comma. Great. Now we're going to go down one line, we're going to hit enter, and now we're going to use catch with an empty parentheses that we will pass an E to, and that E is going to stand for error. So then we're going to use uh, curly brackets, hit enter, and we're going to use a logger.log so that if we do get an error, it will be logged out and that will help us debug. Great. We're done the first portion of our script. We're going to go back up here and we're going to add another script file. And this will be our Slack blocks. And we can clear out this function here and we're going to declare a variable and we can just call it blocks or whatever. And we're going to set it to nothing. Actually, you know what? We won't even put anything there right now so we don't have that red line. You can save it if you want to. Okay, now we're going to go over to your Slack channel. And for the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to add a new channel. Or I'm going to create a new channel. I'm going, to call it, I'm going to call it level one. I'm going to hit next. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just want you to see that you can create channels for uh, sandboxing and development and any of that type of stuff. Uh, so I'm going to create it. And I am not going to invite anybody because I'm the only person in the Slack channel. So you can see uh, I just created this. And now we're going to go up to our menu up top here. So you can see my Slack channel that I created just for this video is called Bridgity Development. Uh, so I'm going to hit this down arrow. And then I'm going to go to Tools and Settings. And then go to the Administration panel and select Manage Apps. We're going to navigate up to the upper right hand corner of the screen and we're going to select this Build button. We're going to use this giant Create an App button, which should result in a token generation um, option down here. We're going to generate a token by selecting our workspace. And then we're going to select create an app. I'm going to create mine from scratch. Uh, I'm going to give it a name of updates. And I will select my Bridgity development workspace. And I will create the app. You can use incoming webhooks from this menu. Or over here, they both will take you to the same place. So we're going to go to incoming webhooks. And then once we get this toggle switch, we will change it from off to on. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to add new webhook to workspace. Search for the channel. I'm going to do that level one room that I just created. So you can see all four of my channels are available here. So I'm going to select level one and I'm going to hit allow. Cool, so now I'm going to scroll down and I will have a webhook URL, which you can select copy. You can see we have a success up there, so I've copied it to my clipboard. We're going to go back to our, our app script and we're going to go to that empty string where we had webhooks and we're going to paste in 
our webhook URL. Now I do want to note that um, you want to be careful with giving this out because when somebody has this, they will be authorized to write to your Slack channel. Um, you know, when I use this in my work, I'll usually hit it, hide it in a file. I know some other people will use the user properties menu, which can be navigated in project settings. Um, I typically develop in isolation, meaning I'm the only one that has direct access to my scripts. Uh, but if you are developing with a team, then you are going to want to make sure that this information is not available in your scripts. You don't want to upload it to the internet or anything like that. Make sure people do not have access to your webhooks. Um, in the event that you do develop this way and you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments section. For the purposes of this video, though, I'm comfortable making this available to you because nobody else uses the Slack channel. I made it for development purposes, and I'll probably delete the credential after this video. Cool. So now that we have this webhook, we can start writing to Slack. Now, as you saw in my example, and actually now that we're in here, you can see that updates has now been added as an integration to the channel, as well as to the Slack workspace. So the cool thing about Slack is the block kit builder that I showed you. So instead of having to learn how to write uh, code uh, for a Slack bot, uh, you can go to, uh, I believe, documentation up here. And then uh, let's just search for block kits. See what we get. Then you can go down to block kit. Go to block kit builder. So I'm going to leave this as um, a link in the description, uh, but Block Kit Builder will give you this option where you can select um, the uh, the JSON code over here, and it will add it on the the right side to your payload over here. So you can just copy and paste it into your script. So what we're going to do is go up top to the the menu up here and hit Clear Blocks, and then check it out. We just have a blank block over here. So just so you can see, I'm going to add some very simple blocks. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to the header section and I'm going to select example. And when I do that, you can see it then adds the code over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the text, right? I'm going to change it to this is my updates Slack bot. Oh, sorry. Update Slack bot. And now you can see that it's, it's updated in real time. So I can just copy paste this code if I want to. But I'm going to add in some basic text. It just says, hello there, I am a basic rich text bot uh, block. And as you can see, we, if we wanted to, we could just change this uh, to whatever we wanted to. Uh, I am also going to add in a divider. And then I'm going to add in a list so you can see we have these like basic bullet points over here and then i'm going to scroll up and i'm going to add in an image without a title so you can see we get this uh delicious looking tacos and what we can do now is we can copy this payload and then go back to our app script and now how we had we have the script for slack block blocks we're going to declare this variable of blocks equal to and then we're just going to paste in that code that we got directly from Slack. And now finally, I'm going to attempt to send it. So in this function, I'm going to call send payload. And then the payload that I'm going to use is going to be blocks. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to try and run it. It's going to ask me to provide uh, permissions. I'm going to select my account. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go to Untitled Project. I'm going to allow it to connect to an external service so that we can send this to our webhook using URL Fetch app. We didn't get any errors. And you can see up top here, we have a notica notification in our Slack room. And check it out. We now got this. This is my update Slack bot with the rich text block, all that stuff that we brought, from, brought over from the block kit builder. 
Cool, so to recap, we learned how to send a Slack message. We created a send payload function that allowed us to process JSON payloads and deliver them to a webhook, which took it to our Slack room. Additionally, we learned how to use Slack's block kit builder, which will be linked in the description, so that we create, could create a custom Slack message that we then sent in our code file. I hope you enjoyed this and you, know, you found this interesting. Um, if you would like to learn more things about how to deliver data with Slack, please let me know in the comments section. Uh, if this seems to resonate with people, then I plan to follow up with um, some more advanced lessons relative to extracting data from Google Sheets and then automating the delivery of Slack messages. I'm thinking maybe we'll learn how to do stuff with forms and, and those types of things. Um, I've used Slack, uh, automated Slack messages in, in my nine to five. Um, and people have found them valuable. Um, so if you do have ideas, I love hearing from you. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll check out the next one. And I wish you the best of luck with your data journey.